Howdy everybody, E4 here and welcome back to the channel for Season 4, Episode 1 of our FIFA 22 Youth to Gold Save. Now, if you haven't watched last season, I highly recommend going back and checking that out because there's about to be some spoilers. Alright, that should have been enough time for you to pause the video. We won EFL League 1 last year, went up as champions. This year, we are in the championship fighting to try and get all the way up to the Premier League. We are in our fourth season, like I said. We got immediate promotion from EFL League 2. We spent two seasons in EFL League 1, getting knocked out in the playoffs in the first season. And in the second season, this past season, we went up on 98 points as champions. It was a great result for us. But now, we're going to be looking to bring in maybe one or two players for this upcoming season in the championship. We've really got to push. I think the team is good enough to at least make the playoffs. That's what we're going to be trying for. So let's go hop in. And just a quick reminder, like we do at the beginning of every season, the stipulations for this save. It's a youth to gold save made uh, more popular by a content creator named Omega Luke. Go check him out. But he does youth to gold saves on Football Manager, and I brought it over to FIFA where we are. It's almost like a youth academy save, but we can sign players. We can, we've can. we made stipulations where we can sign one transfer and one free agent a season so that it doesn't get too easy because I could bring in a lot of really good free agents, especially when our team is that bad. So to keep it pretty fair, we left it on one transfer, one free agent, but I cannot sign anyone over the age of 20 years old or 21 years old, and I cannot play anyone 30 years of age or older. So that is the rules on this game to, or on this save. The save is concluded when we win the Premier League and we win the Champions League with this young squad. So, let's dive in. We'll be starting the season off with the International Friendly Tournament. Uh, we're not going to be showing that on camera like usual. We're going to go through, play those games off camera, just see what we have in the squad. Now, let me take you over to some of the players that I'm targeting this summer. So, the two positions that I really feel like we need help in is striker and right back. We don't have a backup that's really strong enough to step in and carry the team in either position. We have Vasquez as a backup striker, but I'm going to be trying to move him on. Uh, we got word last season that he's done developing, so we're going to try and get him out of the door, and we're going to look for um, a striker from another team. I'm really, really interested in Tom Bloxham. He's six foot five. He has great athleticism, great shooting. I, he's just six foot five. Again, you can't train that. I would love to have a six foot five striker who has acceleration from 76 to 86 and sprint speed from 81 to 91. Are you kidding me? At six foot five, he looks like a monster. We're also checking out Simmons from Man U, Schofield from Leicester, and Gomez from Olympic Lyon. Now, it's going to take a little bit for our scout to come back with updates on them, so I'll update you when I get the update. We're also looking at free agent right backs. Now, the one that I'm really, really interested in and wanting very badly is Arthur Collaire. He's Swiss, but his athleticism is 71 to 81, and his defending is 72 to 82. He honestly potentially could come in and take Ian Taylor's spot at right back. I don't really want that to happen. We'll see um, kind of what we do once we get reports back on all these guys. Some of them may already be signed by the time we get reports back, but those are the two positions that we're really trying to look to strength heading into this next season. We've already sent out all our youth staff as well to go start scouting the United States, Colombia, and Sweden. And our transfer budget this year is 10.05 million. That's a lot. That's the biggest we've had. We could definitely potentially buy one of those strikers depending on the value that the team says that they have. Now, as you can see at the top, our manager rating is a 74 overall, which is pretty low considering we just got promoted. Our board, um, with their expectations last season, in brand exposure, they wanted me to sign one crucial first-team player, and I didn't do it, and they almost fired me over it. I'm really happy that they didn't. I would have been so upset, but let's take a look at these. For youth development, we have to sign three players, 20 years, or younger than 20 years with potential greater. Um, that's the usual one. That one's getting harder and harder to hit just because we've brought so many good young guys in with high potential already. We need to sign two players in the youth academy position assigned to the defender. Um, so we can probably do that. Hopefully we get a right back or something. Uh, seven games without a defeat in home matches. Two players with crucial or important role to strengthen your squad. Now, that could potentially be the striker and right back that we bring in. We'll just have to wait and see. 
Continental success, nothing because we're not in any continental competitions. Domestic success is low. They want me to finish mid-table and reach the round of 16 in the FA Cup. Both of those, I think, are definitely doable with the squad we have now. Again, this summer, we're just trying to look to add a couple positions for depth so that if someone's injured, people are tired, we have backups that can come in and the drop-off of skill isn't too great. Financial, they want me to sell two players and sign one important player to replace them. I sold the two uh, and I did not sign anyone. I kept the salary growth. Those were from last season. I guess they're still the same. And then in this last season, we have to make a $5.9 million profit from youth players and we're 66% of the way there. I am going to be looking to move some guys on. So let's hop over and I'll show you who I'm trying to get out of the door. So I'm going to do a quick montage. I'll go through and list each of the players. I'm going to edit it so it kind of goes back to back. So if you miss something, you can rewind and listen again. But we're going to go through now and list off all the guys that we have on the transfer list. Anthony Lewis, 59 overall goalkeeper, 18 years old. Definitely not going to make it in our squad. We're looking to move him on. Tristan Thompson is now loan listed. I'm not sure I want to sell him. He came in last season for a couple games and did a decent job. But Jacob Lund moved up into the senior team over the summer um, before the new season began you guys missed it but he was done in the youth academy and was demanding to be brought up so we brought him up so he's now our new backup Hugo Osorio is now going on the transfer list. He has an important role, and we're not going to be able to give him that game time. Evan Cook is our new backup left back, so we're going to try and get some money and move Hugo Osorio on. Edvin Dahlberg, that right back who was a backup last season, really didn't see the field much. 59 overall, just not going to make it. We need backups again who the skill is not going to be a big drop-off, so he is also on the transfer list. Jack King, we have confirmation that he will be joining Cerezo Asaka when the transfer window opens for just over $2 million. Marcus Parker, also 59 overall, 17 years of age, could potentially get um, some development down the line, but he's not going to make it. He didn't get into the team at all last year, so he is transfer listed. We're also putting Mark Miranda on the transfer list. He is a depth winger that we probably could use if we get an injury, but we have some in the youth academy that I'm willing to rely on if we need to, so Mark Miranda is on his way out. And last but certainly not least is Pedro Vasquez. He is a 66 overall. He's been a great player for our team, but last season I just felt like he wasn't it. Frank Baker made the step up and won the golden boot. was amazing for us. So Vasquez is going to head out because I want some more finances so that we can potentially buy one of those strikers. And they may unseat Frank Baker, but we need a top-level striker. And then also we need a right back. So we'll use those finances for that, but we're going to try and get Pedro Vasquez out. Munoz may be leaving. Uh, we have a um, Olafson in the Youth Academy who's a 59 or maybe a 60 overall now. Looks like a good little player. So Munoz might be he making his way out the door, but not sure yet. But for now, that is all the guys who are transfer listed that we're trying to move on. The last little bit of business before I go off camera, play those games, and bring you back for the scouting updates and when we get the scouts on our shortlisted players. Andres Sanz, he was $1.1 million valued center defensive mid. We brought him in, and I immediately converted him to a center back. He went from a 58 to a 60 overall. He's only 15, has great potential. He's going to sit down here, incubate for a while, get a couple overall better, and could potentially come in as a fifth string center back. We have um, Schoberg in the team still as a fifth string center back. I almost let him go this summer, but I don't think I'm ready to just yet, again, in case we get injuries. But Andre Sanz looks like a great little player. <sighs> I know that was a lot of talking, and I know it was fast, but that is the quick rundown of what you guys have missed since the end of last season and what my plans are for this transfer window. If I showed you the entire transfer window, it would just take way too long. So again, I will bring you back when I get updates on the guys we're scouting on our shortlist, the strikers and the right backs. And when we get into the next scouting updates, I'll bring you back for that as well. And we will probably play the first game of the season in the new league, the championship. Quick bit of news for you guys. I'm officially putting Fran Perea on the transfer list. It makes me really sad. I've loved using him. He's been such a good player for us the last two seasons. He was one of our first two free agent signings, but we got confirmation again that he's not going to develop anymore. He's a 72 overall. He's been great, but the thing that pushed this through was that we got Mike Nelson to 16 years of age, and at 16, he's a 68, four behind Perea, but their stats are very, very similar. And so Mike Nelson's going to come on at 16 years of age and start for us in the championship. I'm taking a little bit of a gamble. I haven't even used Mike Nelson in game. Could bite me in the butt, but we'll just have to wait and see.
So like I mentioned at the beginning of the transfer window, King left the club for just over $2 million. We've now sold Osorio for $1.5 to Atlanta United, which is my team in the MLS. Go Atlanta. Uh, and then Mark Miranda for $1.3 million to Juventud. And we have an offer already for Fran Perea in the works. If we sell him, I'll bring you back. But we're bringing in a lot of money. And I might even start to look a little bit higher at the quality of players that we could maybe sign and maybe really bring in a top-notch striker. We'll see. I still love Baker, but i got to remember that – I got to make a wise business decision for this team, uh, not just stick with players because I like them. I want to try and get to the Premier League this season, and to do that, we're going to need to bring in a couple key players. So I'll bring you back in a moment when we have some more news. They beat me to it, RC Strasburg, and this is one that I let get away because his value is $7 million. I'm kicking myself for not checking this sooner. We haven't got the complete um, update that... Uh, we've completed the scouting on any of these guys, but I have to remember that after two weeks, you get to see their value. Now, for right backs, I'm looking at Ojeda. He's 18 years old, and he has a $3.8 million value because we missed out on Colaire at $7 million, who would have been like a 72 or 73, but we missed out on him, so we're going to go ahead and stop scouting him and remove him. But it looks like Ojeda at 3.8 is who we're going to take. Ojeda is $3.8 million value. We don't have a value on Gomez yet, but I do have a value on Bloxham, and he is $4.2 million. I think he's going to be one that I really look to bring in. He's probably better than Baker. And, I mean, that acceleration and sprint speed at 6.5 is just insane. I'm not exactly sure what his ball control is. Um, his technicals are pretty good. They're not great, but his shooting is great. His passing is great. Again, we'll come back when we get a little bit more information on the two strikers to make a final decision on which one we want to take. But I am going to go ahead and move forward with Ojeda and try and bring him into the club as a backup right back, maybe starting left back or right back sorry he can play left back he is left footed but he's got a five star weak foot so i'm gonna go ahead and try and bring him in here is the confirmation that we have signed ojeda so again for some perspective he was 3.8 million dollar value in a 72 overall and the first guy kolar i think his name was was seven million dollar value and i didn't sign him he honestly probably would have been 77 78 i mean I got to do a better job of that. I'm used. I've been playing football manager, and I'm used to on there when you put someone on your short list and someone tries to sign them, you get an email saying another team's trying to sign them. So I was hoping it would do that, and it didn't. Doesn't matter. We've signed Ojeda. He is starting on the bench because Taylor's faster, has better passing, and is more physical. Now you could argue that Ojeda's dribbling and defending are better, but Taylor has a better defensive awareness. Granted, only one overall defensive awareness difference, but. Taylor's my boy. He's American. He's been here the whole time. Ojeda has to earn that spot if he wants to dethrone Taylor. If we would have signed the other guy at a 70-whatever, 8, I would have started him. But Ojeda's got to earn his place. So that is our one free agent signing of the summer. Done and dusted. Now, in a couple moments, I'll go check the strikers again, and I'll bring you back to see who we're going to try and sign out of the strikers. We finally have a confirmation on Tom Bloxham's scouting. He's a 70 overall, one overall higher than Baker and valued at 4.2. Nicholas Gomez is only valued at 2.8, so we are going to be done pursuing him. I'm going to go in and we're going to try and buy our first player ever in the save. Try bring Tom Bloxham in for another striking option up top. So let me hop in and see if I can work some magic and bring Tom Bloxham to E4 United. It is official. Fran Perea has left the club for $3.75 million, but that paved way for us to sign Bloxham from Milan for $5 million. We've got his contract signed, so let's go look at him in the squad. So here is Bloxham compared to Baker. He's one overall better. He is way faster. Pretty much the same shooting, a little bit better passing, not as good dribbling, but way more physical in the air. Again, he is 6 Five, which is just massive again we're gonna trust our boys first we're gonna leave Baker in up top but if Bloxham just feels great in the game we're gonna probably have to make a change sooner rather than later 
The thing Bloxham does not have is the agility. Being 6'5", I figured that that would happen. His agility is 72 and Baker's is 86. So Baker can move in and out a lot better and Bloxham not so much. But this also opens the door for us to potentially run a two-striker system with Baker and Bloxham. A big target man and a fast uh, false nine almost, if you will. But he is in the door. Very excited about him. That concludes all the transfer business we can do. If you remember... One of our stipulations of this save is one transfer, one free agent, a season, just to make it a little bit more challenging. So Bloxham has come in as a backup striker. Ojeda has come in as a backup right back. So that's our two signings. It has left our reserves a little thin. Everyone under Lund, we're looking to sell. So I'll just show you like this, or I guess you can't see Cook. So Vasquez and Thompson here, we are selling them. But up top, we have Munoz as a third-string striker. Eliasson can play as a third-string uh, center attacking mid. Bennett and Rivero are backup center mids. Cook is a backup left back. And again, he can play right back, but that's why we brought Ojeda in. Bjorklund and Sjoberg make up our fourth and fifth string center backs now. Uh, the only thing I am a little worried about is we have no depth wingers. If we get into injuries this season, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But again, we have the youth academy that we can kind of lean on if we need to. So let's zoom forward a little bit. We'll do the scouting reports and then play the first game of the season. Hinka dinga dargan, this new season is starting. Let's check out the scouting reports. So here is our youth academy. We still have Navarrete who looks phenomenal. 68 overall, he is going to be our backup keeper whenever he forces a move up. Um, our starter, Smith, is a 75 overall, looking really good. But Navarrete is just such a great player to have waiting in the wings in case we have to sell Smith or he stops developing or whatever. We have Navarrete, which I'm really excited about. Here is Sanz, the guy who came in before the end of last season. Great potential. Really, really excited about him. He could be one of our center backs for the future. Um, I imagine that Bjorklund and Sjoberg will stop developing shortly because they're not getting the game time, and he could step in and take one of their spots. Cameron Wilson here is a 62 overall. Again, just another depth option in the center of the park. We're going to keep him down here to keep developing, but we might bring him up at some point if we need to with injuries, but I highly doubt it. We have five center mids, so we look pretty good there. Now, Cook could see some game time this year uh, just due to the fact that we have no depth wingers and he could be that guy to come up and provide a little bit of depth on the wings. Olofsson here in my mind is the long-term replacement to our second string striker. Uh, I, I don't know what um, new boy up top, what's his name? Bloxham, sorry, could remember. I'll edit the gap right there out, but Bloxham, I don't know if he's going to develop. I don't know his potential. Baker, I think, is going to keep developing. Olofsson has 89 to 94 potential. He looks like he has potential to be special, looking like an insane player. So he, in my mind, is going to be the up-and-coming striker of our team. But that is another look at these guys. Again, I know we look at them most months. Uh, from here on out, we'll go a little bit shorter in talking about them. But that is my projections, my visions for this group of players. So now let's go get into the scouting reports. So guys, the curse strikes again. No prospects on the scouting reports. A million dollars of value or more. Now, we did honestly have like eight players at between 500000 and a million. And maybe in the past I would have jumped on that. But again, we have such a good crop of players. I want only the best who are going to come in, get game time, and develop. So we passed up on them. Uh, maybe we missed someone great. Who knows? We'll never know. But let's go forward and get into that first game of the season. Before we start this game, I want to show you guys our starting lineup at the beginning of Season 4. And over there, I'm going to throw up where we started Season 3 at. And again, I haven't seen it yet because I haven't edited it yet, but I can only imagine how wild it is. I know these guys all last year went up like on average probably 4 overall. So I'm sure the discrepancy of where we started Season 3 and where we're starting this season is huge. And I can't wait already to see the beginning of Season 5, how much farther these guys have developed. But this is the team we're taking into the first game of the season where we take on Preston North End. I'm pretty sure in season two we beat Preston North End in the FA Cup if I remember correctly. I think it was that that was the team that we played before West Ham. So if I'm right they're going to be looking for some revenge but I'm excited to hop in start the EFL championship season get it underway. We're so close to the Premier League, I can taste it. We got to play well this year and fight and fight and fight at least to get into those playoffs. I, I highly doubt we're going to make it 
in the automatic promotion places, but who knows? Crazier things have happened. All we got to do today is take on Preston North End and try and go get three points. This is the team we're taking into the first game of our championship campaign. We have Smith and goal, a back four of Jonasson, Bishop, Lundberg, and Taylor. Crespo and new boy Nelson make up the midfield pairing. Schaefer, Carlson, and Graham, the attacking three behind Baker. On the bench, we have Mohamed, new boy Ojeda, Fialba, Menendez, Nilsson, Wilson, and new boy Bloxham. I almost moved Bennett up to the bench ahead of Vialba. But Vialba is showing great potential, and he is a good player. His technicals are developing. I think if we can get him game time like we did last season, his technicals will develop really well. And essentially, I use Vialba as a super sub. So in the games where Crespo and Nelson are too tired, I bring Bennett and Rivero on to start and keep Vialba on the bench all the time so he's constantly coming in. He's pretty much one of my forever subs. I, so I bring him in pretty much every game because he has all that pace and energy. But anyways... Let's hop into this game against Preston North End and go fight and try and get our first three points of the championship campaign. Woo! Another big key thing that I forgot to mention is that I am working on renewing a bunch of contracts for our players. Reason being is because Bloxham was on $18,500 a week at Milan. And so we brought him in on a $20,000 a week contract, which is definitely more than I wanted to do. Mike Nelson gets his first goal! Oh my goodness! And look at that. The faith to sell for Rea pays off. Baker stops the ball, plays him in nicely. Mike Nelson wallops it. I don't know what I was trying to say. Welly, I don't know. He hits it so hard it goes off the post. I am so excited for him. Oh, I hope that's sign of things to come because he could be our new star man in the center mid position. Got into a great attacking position. Once again, can't even remember what I said. But we are up 1-0. to zero. I let out a good little squeal there as well. <laughs> Sorry if you're wearing headphones and that hurt. But, oh man, that caught me off guard. I was super stoked about that. That was awesome. Great way to start this championship season. Get it into Mike Nelson now. And we're taking this up with Carlson. We're going to give it down to Graham on the wing. And we're going to go back post to Crespo. He does get there, doesn't get a strong enough head on it, and the goalkeeper collects. I think if I can remember correctly, what I was saying was that Bloxham was on a ton of money, and so we had to sign him for 20000 a week. And so a bunch of our other players are now wanting bigger contracts, understandably, because Bloxham isn't even our best player. So we've been working on getting that together um, for the squad. So I'll continue to update you. Schaefer's there. Oh, and he has the jump kick, and the keeper saves it. Here's the following corner. So our wage bill is going to go up immensely this year, which is fine. I mean, I was expecting that to start happening sooner rather than later, but we've signed, I think, three or four contracts, and like each one of them has gone up like an overall 400%. <laughs> it's been a little nutty. Uh, but we're in the championship now. There's no more money. That's why um, even doing the one signing for a transfer, one signing for a free agent isn't that bad, honestly, because it keeps um, – after signing both those players, we still had – I think it was like $12 million in the bank after all the sales we made. So I was able to move a bunch of that money over into the wage budget, get it down Mike Nelson, great ball, and sign those players up. But here we go, Mike Nelson into Schaefer. And Schaefer just misses. I was trying to get it on his right foot to curl it around the keeper, but it goes wide. One player that I am a little nervous about, he's a great player, but I am a little nervous about him, is um, Jonasson. Just because he is slow, and he we're about to be in the Premier League, and he is on our left side. So players like Mo Salah, uh, who else? Um... You have, I mean, Riyad Mahrez, I guess St. Maximin's on the left, and he's not on that level, but a lot of top-level players, right-wingers, are going to be coming into uh, Jonasson, and his pace is a little lackluster. Great defender, but he is slow, but that's a problem for another day. Today, we got to take care of this team, and we are doing a great job thus far. Poor pass from Graham trying to get that into Mike Nelson. But so far, Mike Nelson is passing the eye test for me. 
He feels good in the game. Oh, no. And we can't get the block. They get a goal back. It's now tied 1-1. One to one, And that was just poor from our defense. We got to tighten that up. And, again, I have to manage my expectations. I want to go up as champions. But, realistically, us pushing for a promotion spot would be good. And I'm not even sure how good Preston Northen is in this far into FIFA 22 after um, three seasons played in this save. So I can only be so upset, but I feel like we should have handled that a little bit better. That is halftime. It's tied 1-1. One to one. Mike Nelson with the early goal to put us in the lead, but then we let them get one back. I don't even think I was commentating. I'm pretty sure I was focused and we let a goal up. <laughs> I can't remember. But we got to get into the second half, try and find another goal, try and get out of here with three points. Here they are, pushing down our right side, trying to get in. Oh, and they get around Taylor. Lundberg should be there for the header. He does get it clear. Crespo is pressured, but he gets out, and we're going to try and get that up to Nelson, into Graham, back to Nelson. And I want that to Carlson. It's there. Great pass. We'll go into Gr Oh, my finger slipped. Oh, I was trying to go to Crespo the whole time. Ah, we couldn't get it. My finger slipped off the thumb pad, and they handle our attack. Another thing that makes Mike Nelson's goal even better is the fact that he is only 16 years old. Uh, I had kind of forgotten about that. I mean, I talked about it at the beginning of the game, but um, I didn't mention it when he scored. But he's 16 years old and just scored in the championship in his first game. Just awesome awesome story i'm excited already to see him develop and see kind of what player he turns into i haven't even looked at his potential um what his what it says that he is okay we got baker coming in here we're gonna go back to crespo and we're gonna not get it off because he's blocked and Jonasson was there no yellow card or advantage we're gonna go out to graham and it's a poor pass from mike nelson the excuse all year for Mike Nelson is he's 16. <laughs> That's what we're going to be saying. Cut him cut him some slack. The man's 16. All right. Okay. I'm, okay, good. Smith is there for it. I mean, shoot, I was not even close to a professional. <laughs> I mean, anything. Profe I was going to say professional soccer player at 16. I mean, I wasn't close to professional anything at 16. I was a complete nincompoop, as I'm sure most of you were. So the fact that he's <laughs> scoring goals in the championship for us is awesome. I don't know what I'm talking about. I digress. I'm trying to win this ball back. Nelson can't get a foot in. Here they are. Pressing into our half yet again. And I am getting a little nervous here. Lundberg cuts that out. Gets it up into Graham. We'll go down to Nelson. Graham can't get the pass off. And that's in. Great save from Smith. They recover the ball on the edge of the area. I need Bishop to win that. He doesn't. And now we're trying to play back. Good. That goes out on them for a goal kick. We haven't made any subs either. I'm honestly really enjoying our team right now. No one's super tired. And I think this is the correct call to hold these boys on the pitch. We're going to send that with Schaefer. And he's or not even Schaefer. It was Carlson. Excuse me. We're hitting him with a dead fish again. Let's go. What a shot from outside the area. The up-and-coming superstar of this team with has potential to be special. Could that be the game winner? Crespo passes it into him. I was looking for a pass maybe to Nelson. Didn't see it. Decided to shoot it. And we are up 2-1. to one. I think that is our two youngest players on the team as well getting our goals this game starting the season off so well oh that was it felt so good to get Carlson a goal already this early he led the league in assists last season and now he's looking to uh add some finishing to his repertoire as well uh, I can't get that around I was hoping that we would have Baker run into that space but the pass was kind of poor and we're on the defensive here just trying to hold on for these three points. That's a great ball from them over the top. And Bishop tried to get there, couldn't. We get a foot in there to block it. And it goes all the way out to Graham. And we're just going to try and run down the wing here. Not even pass it yet. Come on, blow the ref whist. Bro, blow that, the whistle ref, not the ref. 
Let's go. And there's the final whistle. We win 2-1 to one on the first day of the new season with goals from Nelson and Carlson. What an exciting game. Oh, man, I am excited to dive into this new season and keep making this content for you guys because this is awesome. That win puts us in the top five already. Again, as many points as we can get early on just to get up the table as far as possible before we hit our wobble. Every season it happens in FIFA unless you just have an insane team or maybe you're just better at the game than me. But every year we at E4 United hit a wobble. So I want to try and get as many points as we can, ride this momentum from the promotion. Looks like Norwich are down here, QPR, Middlesbrough, Brighton and Hove Albion as well are down here now. Any other big teams? Stoke is still here. Sheffield United, West Brom. So there's some teams that have been in the Premier League recently. Reading, Derby. There's a lot of good teams down here. So we got to keep winning, but we got our first win of the season today. That's huge for us. Now we just got to stay on a roll and try and get some more points on the board before the next episode what a start to this season we've brought in two key players a right back and a striker they will get the game time but baker's already gone up to a 70 overall as well again i will be doing contracts off camera to uh appeal appease our players because with uh bloxham coming in on 20 grand a week uh, we have some unhappy people and i imagine schaefer's probably not happy the good news about restructuring all these contracts is uh, most of them are at three plus years left and i'm able to add one or two years on the end of their contracts when we up their money so it's prolonging all these boys uh the oldest guy at the club i think is schaefer uh and i think he's only 21 let's take a quick look because i don't actually know he's 20 and he is our oldest player so uh, we have essentially, with this great team, nine more seasons of using these players if we keep them in the squad. But I'm super excited. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up on the video and comment. Again, I'm a small content creator trying to grow this. Any and all love helps so much. So thank you guys for hanging out and uh, helping me out. I, I put a lot of time into this. Uh, I work a full-time job and I do this. I would love to do this full-time at some point. So it really helps me. It's free to you su to subscribe. So please do it. Again, it helps me. I want this to get monetized. I want to do this as a business. Do it full-time for you guys so I can make more content and better content. But I'm enjoying my journey through the Crucible as a content creator. And I am enjoying this team's journey through the Crucible. Until next time, E4 out.